This is the Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast. Hey, family. Welcome to Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. Thank you for listening today. I trust and pray that everyone is keeping warm because it is very cold outside. The question is always, what are you doing to maintain inside? Of course, that question is just as important literally as it is figuratively. Are you forgiven or are you forgiving? According to God's word, forgiveness is yours just for the asking. So that also means we ought to forgive because it is a God ordained principle that God has made available to everyone. We serve a loving, forgiving God. Now I am by no means perfect, nor do I claim to be. No matter how well I study or how much of God's word upon which I expound, at times I must seek and ask forgiveness, not only from God, but from my husband, friends, relatives, my children, and even strangers. So often people say that they do not care what others think of them, but we all should. God's people must care. As followers and children of God, we were commanded to follow peace with all men. And in order to maintain peace, you and I must often ask forgiveness for something that we have said, done, or even thought. After all, We are human and prone to make mistakes and even bad decisions sometimes. I am being held responsible by God for loving others and treating all respectfully just as I want others to treat me. So whenever I offend, be it willfully or unintentionally, it is my God-ordained responsibility to ask forgiveness. According to God's word, when I fall short, and sometimes we all do, I must repent of any transgressions and seek forgiveness. You see, I am singularly, personally responsible for how I treat others, all others. Even within the Our Father prayer, which was taught by Jesus Christ, we repeat, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Another version says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So clearly, our expectation of being forgiven is squarely congruent to our ability to forgive. Proverbs 17th chapter and the ninth verse states that love prospers when a fault is forgiven but dwelling on it separates close friends. To dwell on past hurts, infractions, or the wrong that has been done against you is the sin of unforgiveness. Today I want to impress upon you our human need to forgive. You see, God knew what we, enduring mankind, were up against long before many of us could begin to realize our true identity. We are spiritual beings having human experiences. Therefore, the human part of us, that which is flesh, is going to offend time and time and time again for as long as we remain mortal. In Matthew 18th chapter, the 21st through the 22nd verse, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Now those who are paying close attention and are factually inclined know well that 70 times times seven is 490. The point was, as many times as you are asked to forgive, you must forgive. So it was God in his infinite wisdom who gave us the capacity to forgive. 
ask forgiveness, and be forgiven. I often say to forgive is never a weakness, but an all-important strength that frees each from hurt and circumstances over which we have no control. Everyone does not have the capacity to forgive without the power and favor of God. Quite sadly, some hold grudges and self-consuming unforgiveness deep in their hearts, even long after the offender is sickly, elderly, or even dead and long gone. Please recognize that unforgiveness is a sickness, and just like a metastasized cancer, it grows and destroys the whole person, each and every aspect of one's life. According to Mark 11th chapter and the 25th verse, we must bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Do not judge and you will not be judged. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So then praying while harboring unforgiveness will in turn hinder your ability to be forgiven. You see, unforgiveness is both a sin and a curse. After all, God has commanded us to forgive one another. So to either refuse or neglect to forgive is a sin against God's commandment. The curse of unforgiveness remains stagnating. If you fail to forgive, you are cursed with a curse of not being forgiven. God's word admonishes us to forgive so that we can be forgiven. In Matthew 6th chapter and the 15th verse, it reminds us that if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Think about it. In order to gain forgiveness or be forgiven, you must first be forgiving. I want to remind you that unforgiveness even opens your body to endorphins that will facilitate illnesses. So forgiveness is like a medicine that clears out the old sore that if unforgiveness were left to linger, the open wound would fester and drain with infection, contaminating all in its path, until forgiveness takes place to clean out and dry up the old sore of unforgiveness. I heard an older person explain that forgiveness, when you are the one offering forgiveness, is not for the other person, it is for you. Not only does it stop bad feelings that occupy far too much time and energy in your head and heart that could be put to better use showing and giving love, but it holds you in a space where you cannot move forward. When you are held hostage by unforgiveness, you are always the victim and it places other people and events in control of your progress your feelings, and oftentimes your mood. A study by Johns Hopkins researchers explained that chronic anger puts you into a fight or flight mode, which results in a number of changes in heart rate, blood pressure, and immune response. Those changes then increase the risk of depression, heart disease, and diabetes, among other chronic conditions. Forgiveness, however, calms stress levels, leading to improved health. Forgiveness is not just about saying the words. It is an active process in which you make a conscious decision to let go of negative feelings, whether the person deserves it or not. One researcher by the name of Schwartz added, as you release the anger, resentment, and hostility, you begin to feel empathy, compassion, and sometimes even affection for the person who wronged you. 
Right there is when and where we see light at the end of the tunnel as it takes God's strength to forgive even when you know someone has offended or wronged you. On the other hand, it is the enemy's scheme to control you and every aspect of your life with unforgiveness. When unforgiveness maintains a strong hold and you are trying to obey God's word, you end up trying to do all that God has instilled. And it even seems to be working for a while, at least until that individual toward whom you somehow harbor hidden unforgiveness and the wound reopens as if the transgression took place just today. You know, the one toward whom you have strong feelings of trustworthlessness. I can't stand such and such. I'm okay until I seek them, hear their name, or even worse, just the sound of their voice. You see, unforgiveness is one of the oldest tricks of the enemy because it is subtle if you are not forced to be around he or she for whom you have unforgiveness. It is the small infraction that could very well lie dormant in your heart and mind, at least until you must come in contact with the individual. You may have even thought the matter had been forgotten until you are forced to knowingly be in the same room with them no matter how large the space. But your heart and the warm, uneasy feeling deep within your gut does not lie. Your stomach, your gut, your heart cannot lie. Bishop T.D. Jakes described the sin and curse of unforgiveness as you drinking deadly poison and waiting for someone else to die. All the while, unforgiveness is killing you slowly as it chokes your soul and weakens your immune system so that every common illness can attack and become devastating to you. Only to a body dying of unforgiveness, the least little illness is a huge deal with possibly deadly consequences. According to a 2012 study conducted by Toussaint, Owen, and Cheadle, they explained, and I quote, unforgiveness destroys our physical health and psychological well-being. It shows up in many health-related complaints and can be a cause of ill health and psychological ailment, end of quote. Certainly, we all have at least one relative whom the family often shuns, claiming they're crazy, deranged, or simply not nice. You know, unpleasant to be around. When if proper research is done, that person's physical, behavioral, and psychological imbalances may very well be traced back to unforgiveness. Now allow me to clarify. I did not say the relative is not sick because they are actually very sick, but the condition of the head, health, and heart may be traced back to unforgiveness. I just want you to remember to forgive so that you can live. Be it a friend, family member, or stranger you met, we can never omit, negate, or forget. Forgiveness allows freedoms, liberate your heart and mind, so that health, wealth, and good life will be ours to find. Be willing to forgive every day that you live to experience happiness in your life, unencumbered by stress in the fullness of God's best and the absence of illness fed by strife. Learn to check your heart right from the very start with each and every day you live. Maintain love and respect and continue to protect heart and soul, we must always forgive. No matter how serious the transgression or how much it may hurt, freedom of forgiveness, a divine gift and heavy burden lift, tis the weight of gold well worth. God said forgive one another, all sisters and brothers is what we each must do. 
if we desire God's grace and mercy, his divine intervention to forgive both me and you. Just know forgiveness is never a posture of weakness. As so many have been told, it is the protection of guarding one's peace and well-being, the freeing of my soul. Forgiveness renders me liberated from the snare of others who offended. It is the action of God's own righteousness to render mind, soul, and body all mended. God's word has commanded that we forgive. It is an act that God approves. The posture that benefits my health and mind to love, grow, and make God move. No time to be sick and cannot get well or believe I'm holding the one who hurt me down. Long after the trespasser has forgotten is too old or sick some even decades in the cold, dead ground. Forgiveness is not for someone else, as unforgiveness feeds off one's heart, mind, and soul. It is often the underlying feed for the heart disease, high blood pressure, and sickness untold. So get your mind in a place so that you can erase the demons that prevent your forgiving. Ask God to grant you grace in this time and in this place so you can enjoy happy, healthy life living. Read God's word and study to find forgiveness frees heart and mind so your life and body are all in good health. It is the impetus for good living. The very act of forgiving energizes your state of mind and physical wealth. Begin today to forgive yourself and say, God has equipped me with all that is required. I forgive every transgressor and pray no more unforgiveness in my way so that God keeps me uplifted, heart encouraged, and soul inspired. Well, family, this is number 91 of Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. I only want to remind you today that we must forgive others, all others, if we want God to forgive us. Most importantly, our capacity to forgive is not for the person or people we are forgiving, but it is for us. Forgiveness frees us from endorphins that weaken our immune system and compromise our psychological wellness. Forgiveness promotes our overall health and well-being physically, socially, and mentally. If you've been awaiting a move of God in your life, reach deep inside yourself and ask God for his help with your ability to forgive. Trust and believe that he will do it. I pray for each of you that you enjoy living your best life. I dare you to free yourself from the curse of unforgiveness so that you can enjoy God's unmerited favor for beautiful health and wealth in mind, soul, and body. Yes, go ahead and forgive so you can live. God bless each of you. Please don't forget to say something on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn page. You can listen to me on YouTube or Amazon Music as well. I welcome your questions, comments, critiques, and suggestions on topics you'd like to explore. Who knows, you might just end up being a guest on an upcoming broadcast. Remember, I'm just a regular girl navigating this diverse world. I'm looking forward to each of you. Until then, take care of yourself, each other, and stay blessed. The Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Log on to castropolis.com.